All right, my name is Frank Felker, and my company is called The Customer Factory. I appreciate you spending some time with me this afternoon to learn about how to take your business from going invisible, from being invisible, to becoming famous online. We're going to talk about secrets of local internet marketing that can get your company on the front page of Google this week. Sounds like a pretty strong statement, but I think uh, when you see what I have to say here, you will see that not only is it possible, but it's possible for you to be able to do this for yourself. I want to give you a little bit of background on myself. I've been in business. I literally grew up in business in my family's printing business starting back in the early 70s. I actually started doing business online before there was such a thing as the internet receiving print jobs uh, through a modem and a thing called a bulletin board system. Uh, <laughs> it's a guy named David Lawrence, still has a radio show uh, that's called David Lawrence Tonight. was on his show about 15 years ago, and at that time he said that introduced me as Frank Felker was online before online was cool. So I've been doing this for a long time. I've had the opportunity to work with and present before thousands of uh, business owners across the country and in South America and Europe. I have books on the topic of sales on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible stores. I was recently uh, blessed to be named a constant contact authorized local expert here in the Washington, D.C. area. And what I do with the Customer Factory is create marketing programs that include local, social, mobile, and video marketing to drive a consistent flow of new business to my clients. It's important that today you come away with these three pieces of knowledge, if, if nothing else. The first one is, what's the difference between local internet marketing and search engine optimization? We are going to be talking about search engine optimization. We are going to be talking about getting your company on the front page of Google. That's obviously the whole thing. But what most people think of when they think of search engine optimization, they think of optimizing their website so that it can be found on the front page of Google. I'm going to show you a variety of techniques that you can use to be found and have customers contact you even if you don't have a website. We're going to talk about how search engines work. How did they come to be? What function do they perform? How do we use them? Why do we use them? And how do they give us the answers uh, that we're looking for? And then, armed with that knowledge, we're going to talk about how you can put those search engines to work for you, bringing you customers in the door. Specifically, our agenda today is to define local internet marketing understand why this is something that's absolutely critical information for you and your business. We're going to talk about and examine how people, people like you and people like me, use search engines. We're going to talk about what Google sees when they look at a web page versus what you see and what it shows you on search results pages and how those two things work together to help you understand how to make sure that you rather than your competitor shows up on the front page. Finally, we're going to end up with some specific action items, things that you can do in the next few days that are going to help you to become much more visible online. Okay, so the first question is, what is local internet marketing? Well, in general, just in general terms, it's the art of making your company famous on search engines. You'll see what I mean about that. In just a moment, I'm going to define the difference between invisible and famous. But it's important that you keep the word local in mind, that this technique or these techniques are going to connect you with ready, willing, and able buyers of your product or service who either live or work within a 10-mile radius of your location. Now, you will also see how these techniques can allow you to become known and famous to people beyond a 10-mile radius. But I would submit to you that those people are really not that important to you. You want the people, if this is your type of business, you run a local business for whom the 80-20 rule is that 80% of your customers live or work within 10 miles of your location. These are the people you need to focus on. Now, why is it that it's critical that you understand what is going on here? Well, I'll explain. We all know that we've been through a shift, we're going through a shift, there's <laughs> change happening so rapidly we can barely keep up with it. But here are a few statistics from two or three years ago, and 
I, certainly, they're just the numbers are even higher today. I'm going to show you these and explain these statistics, and then I'm going to rate, relate these percentages to the city that I'm sitting in right now, Alexandria, Virginia, and then we'll see exactly in real hard numbers in a real life city what do these numbers mean. First number is that 56% of all Americans use search engines every day. I would submit to you the number is probably higher than that, may, may well be over two thirds. Of those searches, 45% of them are for local products and services, for information about local products and services like restaurants and plumbers and HVAC companies and antique shops and bridal shops and you name it. Anything that you can think of that's a local oriented business where you either go to them uh, or they come to your home and to provide their product or service. Um, the next point is that People don't search for a local product or service until they're ready to buy. If they don't need it, they're not looking for it. There is a certain amount of price shopping. Generally speaking, that's done, though, on uh, big products like uh, types of things you buy in, in Best Buy. The Best Buy obviously has a big problem with that, where people search all the data online, and then they go in and uh, get additional data from the uh, sales. Then they walk out the door and, and buy online. I'm talking about... But products and services that, for the most part, cannot be delivered online, but can easily be marketed online. These people are ready to buy, and they prefer to buy from a local company right now. So, let's say that uh, <laughs> I have a little hang up here. Hold on. Excuse me a second. Okay, excuse me, my uh, thing got hung up. Okay, so we're back to that slide. Let me go back to uh, full screen mode. And we'll try it again. So I did a little research on my local city here, Alexandria. And what I found through the uh, Census Bureau is that the last time a count was taken, there were 150,006 residents in the area defined by the Census Bureau as Alexandria. Let's just round that off to 150,000, shall we, for uh, ease of arithmetic. Now, based on the percentages I showed you before, 56% of Americans search daily online, 45% of those people search for local products and services. We multiply those times the 150,000 uh, people in Alexandria, and what we learn is that 84,000 people in Alexandria alone use a search engine every day. 37,800 Alexandrians search for local products and services every day. If you multiply that times seven days in a week, it's over a quarter million searches for local products and services every week in Alexandria alone. It works out to almost 14 million searches for local products and services just in Alexandria every year. Clearly, this, these are numbers that we can't ignore. The people that are making those searches are the people you want to buy from you. But if they can't find you online, they have no choice but to buy from your competition. So if you are invisible online, this is specifically what I mean by it. We can't find your website on Google. We can't find any online directory listings for you, and I'll explain what those are shortly. We don't see any online classified ads for you on the front page of Google. We don't see any videos about you. We don't see any blog posts about you. We just don't see you at all when we're searching. Now, instead, if you were famous, you would be appearing on the front page of Google with multiple listings. And I'll show you here shortly clients of mine who are not only on the front page once, but they're on the front page multiple times. And you can also be found on the front page for multiple different search terms. Um, with the information that we want to know about you, and I will explain what that is, and you will also see momentarily, many of these listings are not websites. So hang in there. This is getting good. Let's talk about how we use search engines, because that's at the root of how everything is done and why Google does what it does and, and how it does what it does. Let's face it, the, our search engine for local products and services in the previous century was the Yellow Pages. We had an immediate need. We didn't pick up the big yellow book unless we had an immediate need for something right now. 
So what would we do? We'd turn to plumbers in the yellow pages, our fingers would start walking. People would pay the big money to have the biggest ads at the front of the listings because those are the ones we would go to and we would generally buy from somebody who had a big ad at the front of the listings. The only reason we would go past the big ads is if two things. Either we were looking for somebody's name in particular or we didn't see what we were looking for in those ads. Generally speaking though, if you were looking for somebody in particular, you would go to the white pages. It's a lot easier to find somebody. Once you found what you were looking for, you'd pick up the phone. Now, if we reverse that situation, search engines are our 21st century yellow pages. We still need something fast. We don't call or we don't look unless, you know, the uh, water heater's blowing up or the car's broken down or that I'm looking for someplace to eat right now. We search, we need something fast, we start clicking or we start whipping around on our phone or our tablet. We find the page one organic results on Google or whatever our search engine of preference is, and again, we pick up the phone. And when we do that, what is it that we're looking for when we're searching? These, this is based on market research data. This is absolutely true. That people aren't even looking for your website. That's number five on the list of things that they're looking for. If they search and feel that you have what they're looking for, the number one thing they want is your phone number. Next, they want to know your location and directions to your location to find out whether you're nearby or convenient to them. The next thing they want to know is, are you open right now for me to call or go over and visit? And the new thing that they're looking for invariably today, what's your reputation? What are people saying about you? How many stars do you have on whatever reputation or review site that they're interested in? Angie's List, Yelp, Google Plus Local, there's a variety of them. They want to know because they will believe what other strangers have to say about you before they believe anything they read that you wrote about yourself. So, phone number, location, hours of operation, and reputation. You want to make sure that that information is out everywhere. Now, let me give you a quick caveat relative to reputation. It's a thorny subject and it's going to be a topic of an entirely different webinar. But nonetheless, good, bad, or indifferent, people are looking for that information and I'll tell you what, they'll sooner walk away from you because they don't see any reviews than they will walk away from you for bad reviews. You've got to engage with reputation. We will be talking about that in the future separate webinar. So, where do you want to have this information, phone number, address, hours of operation and reputation? Number one, you want it on every page of your website. How many of us have had the experience of going to a website and finding something we're interested in, we can't find the phone number? You want your phone number to be easy to find everywhere you go. If you notice, I have my phone number almost on almost every slide of this presentation. Next, the online directory listing sites, places like Google Plus Local, Manta, YP.com, YellowPages.com, uh, Yahoo Local, Bing Maps, you name it. There are a wide variety, probably scores of these types of companies uh, online where you can put your hours of operation, a link back to your website, reviews that people have written about you, uh, your phone number, all the things that people are looking for. Um, there's also the opportunity to place online classified ads that are search engine optimized on Backpage, Craigslist, and OLX. Thumbtack is another online directory site where you can put your information, and I have seen it work very well for a client of mine uh, who runs an equestrian center. Another great place to put all of your information is on Patch.com. If you're not familiar with Patch.com, I strongly recommend you check it out. Uh, not just because I write a column for Patch.com, but when it comes to local search engine optimization, it's hard to beat Patch.com. I, I run up against them quite often when I'm uh, doing SEO work for my uh, clients. You also can uh, put your information in YouTube. Again, this is going to be a topic for an entirely separate presentation, but Google gives a lot of authority to YouTube and to video information, something you should really look at. You can put out press releases that have your information in it anytime you have a new product, a new client, and any, any milestone. And obviously, you need to have your information on Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, where in both cases, you can have a company page that will have a high level of authority with Google. So let's talk a little bit about how search engines work. 
Why do we use Google in the first place? Well, we use it because it gives us a lot of timely, relevant information that answers whatever question it is that we put to it and solves the problem that we're currently facing almost every time we search. Now, there certainly are times we've all had the experience where you go to Google and it doesn't give you what you're looking for. But more often than not, it does. And if it didn't, you would stop coming back and searching. That's why it's critical to Google that the information they, <coughs> excuse me, they deliver to you is timely and relevant and does answer your question and does solve your problem. Because if they don't do that on a consistent basis, you'll start, you will stop searching with them and they will not uh, be able to make all that great ad revenue. So keep that in mind, timely, relevant information. So based on timely, relevant information, what exactly does Google put on the uh, and I'm sorry for the acronym, but uh, it's something you need to become aware of. A SERP is a search engine results page. We're going to spend a lot of time looking at search engine result pages here shortly. But how does Google decide what, to, what information to give you based on, uh, excuse me, not how do they decide, but exactly what information do they present to you? They show you links to web pages, not websites. This is a critical factor. If let's say that you, um, you uh, do home improvement and you do replacement windows and new doors and vinyl siding and roofing, you can have individual pages for each of those service offerings on your website and Google will index them individually. And if somebody's looking for roofing in Springfield, Virginia, they will, find, they will be directed to your roofing page, not your home page. And if they're looking for vinyl siding in Springfield, Virginia, and provided that you are search engine optimized, they will see a link to your vinyl siding page, not to your home page. So the first thing they show you is links to web pages, not websites. Next, they show you ads, Google AdWord ads. We're going to take a look at these. They show you Google Plus local listings. They show you YouTube videos. They also show you other types of videos, but obviously they favor YouTube over other uh, video hosting sites. They show you social posts. By that I mean things that people have written on um, Facebook and Twitter and other places. They show you news items like articles from the Washington Post or what have you. And they show you blog posts. People have written about particular things uh, that are related to your search term. They also show you online classified ads from places like Backpage and uh, Craigslist. So let's take a look at exactly what I'm talking about. Here we have a Google search result page. This, my friends, is a SERP. And I think we all uh, recognize it. Let's look at the top. The first thing is the search phrase we used. Appliance Repair, Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. Now, if the thought occurs to you that, wow, that's a very long search term and that sure is specific, I'll explain to you in a little while and I will prove to you in a little while that people are that specific when they search because we're learning that the more specific we are, the more likely we are to get exactly the information we're looking for. So below that, or let's look to the right top. These are text ads. These are AdWords ads. AdWords is a program from Google. This is how Google makes tens of billions of dollars a year is on these funny little ads that are related to your search term. As a quick aside, about 80% of the time, people will click on a, an organic result, as you see in the lower left corner where I say one of my sites. This is an organic search result. 80% of the time, they'll click on one of those. 20% of the time, they'll click on an ad. So we also see text ads at the top of the page there. Uh, I have a pink or, or yellow background. And then I want to point out, down at the bottom, one of my sites, Appliance Repair in Old Town Alexandria. I'm going to come back and explain all the elements of that search result listing here uh, in a little, little while. Now. Here are other things. Let me, let me back up one second because I want to make the point that what we're going to do here is right now we're at the top of this page, right? At the very top is where the search phrase goes in. We scroll down a little bit and we, uh, we see the ads and then we see some organic uh, results. And then what do we see next as we scroll down the page? The next thing that we see is 
what used to be called Google Maps, and it's now called Google Plus Local. So first thing is we had the little thumbtacks on the map. And as you may know, you can click on one of those and it will bring up further information about that company. Each one of the thumbtacks has a letter on it, A, B, C, D, and so forth. And they relate to the thumbtacks that you see below. So the next thing we see where we see appliance repair, that uh, the blue link that says appliance repair, if you click on it, it will go to their website, alexandriaappliance.com. Just below there, just below the A thumbtack and their address, Mount Vernon Avenue, you see where it says Insider Pages, Yahoo, Judy's Book, AOL.com. These are all online directory <coughs> listings. Excuse me. Again, these are all non-website results where they can be found. And I'd be willing to bet you click on those, you're going to find out what their phone number is, as you see right in front of you, what their address is, as you see right in front of you, or further information like their hours of operation and so forth. Now, if we look to the right, where I have the word reputation, and it's 13 reviews. So far out of 13, they've only got three out of five stars. They really need to get after that. Again, that'll be something we'll talk about in a future webinar. Um, below that, Alexandria Dryer Repair. We see that that's a Google Plus local listing, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. But the point is that when you click on Alexandria Dryer Repair, you will not go to their website. You will go to their uh, Google Plus local page. And that's what I've just done here. I, I've clicked on that link, and now this is their Google Plus local page. If you haven't looked at yours, you really need to. Uh, it appears to me that they have not really um, done anything about it. <laughs> In fact, I see something here just under their address and phone number. It says, the services they offer are appliance repair service and internet service provider. So probably not. I don't think that's correct. but. Uh, Anyway, you as the owner can go in, claim your listing, and then upload photos, upload videos, uh, write descriptions, and everything about your business. It's absolutely critical that you do this because, again, even without a web page, Google's going to put you on the front page of their search results because you're engaging with their Google local service, and it's free. So as we were scrolling down the page, now we come to the bottom of the page, and I want to show you some more non-website listings. The upper left, it says directory listings. That's a yellowpages.com directory listing. The second listing, directory listing is Merchant Circle. That's another online uh, directory that you can create a listing for free. The next listing is a review site, yelp.com. Again, it's something you can go and claim your listing. You should optimize your listing. You should also reply to every review you get, whether it's positive or negative, We'll talk about reviews in a future webinar. It's also important that you understand here at the bottom of this page is a YouTube video. Somebody has actually created a YouTube video that's titled Appliance Repair Alexandria, Virginia. Now, I've watched that video. It ain't exactly riveting, but it has gotten them listed. And if you notice, their phone number is in the link. This is what it's all about. Many people will not even click on the link. They'll just see something that says Appliance Repair Alexandria, Virginia, which is exactly what they're looking for. Here's the phone number. I'll just call this number. It's also important that you understand when we talk about mobile, again, mobile marketing is a whole different webinar we'll do, that if this link showed up on a mobile search result, that phone number would be tap to call or click to call and be tappable. You just click it, tap it, and it puts the call right through. This is something very important to keep in mind. So how does Google decide who is going to go on page one? Well, I'm showing you a list of all these things here. And obviously, there's a lot to talk about, a lot to think about. But I want to just give you a, a, a forecasting statement. They look at the title tag, the description tag, the URL or the domain name, footer text on the page, headline on the page, subheadlines on the page, bold and bulleted text, which they see as being given emphasis. They look at citations, 
uh, which are things like your listings on the uh, on those websites like Manta and so forth, backlinks from other sites, what level of Google authority or page rank do those sites have that are pushing the backlinks to you? We're not going to go into terrible deep depth on backlinking today. We're going to talk almost exclusively about what's called on-site or on-page search engine optimization. But these are things that Google looks at. They also look at things called recency, frequency, and relevancy. And I'll explain to you in a moment what that means. All right. Here, my friends, is a very normal-looking website. This is a website I created for a very small company uh, that does uh, transportation and companionship and a variety of other services for senior citizens in Northern Virginia, Fairfax County. So as you look at this, does this appear to you to be a sort of super juiced up search engine optimized powerhouse of the internet? No, of course it does. But in a moment, I'm going to show you what the difference is between what you're what Google's looking at when they look at this site. Now, just to give you a little bit more of, a, of an opportunity to try to make this work, I'm going to give you a closer look at the, at the juicy bits that I'm about to point out to you to see if you can see anything that, that makes you feel like this is highly search engine optimized. If you haven't seen it, you probably won't if, as long as I, I could leave it up there for a long time. So let me just show you. This is what you see when you look at this website. And now, let me show you what Google sees when they look at this website. Okay? Starting from the upper right, Google sees a title tag that says, Transportation Services for Northern Virginia Senior Citizens. Pardon me. The interesting thing about the title tag is, it's visible for you to see it, but people almost never look at it. They never notice it. Google notices. And the worst thing, for example, that you could have <laughs> as a title tag, and I see it quite a bit on your home page, you look at the title, it says home, or it says home page, or it could say uh, index, or unidentified, or you name it. You really want the title tag to speak to exactly what you do. Google puts a lot of authority on it, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So the next thing, we come down one tick, and we look to the left where it says URL. URL is universal resource locator. Basically what it means is your web address. And what you see is, uh, it got cut off a little bit there, but Independent U is the name of this company. And you see www.independentu.net forward slash transportation services for Northern Virginia senior citizens. Hmm, that's exactly what the title tag said. Then we come down on the left to where it says headline. And the headline says, Transportation services for Northern Virginia senior citizens. We might be on to something here. Finally, at the lower right, the subhead says, Transportation services for Northern Virginia senior citizens. Now, there are people who would argue that I'm just, you know, flogging a dead horse by saying this over and over again, and that Google might actually penalize you for what they would call over-optimization. I beg to differ. This site I put up, in June of 2011, so 18 months ago, and nothing has ever been done to it since. I just pulled this search result this morning. If you type transportation for seniors in Northern Virginia into Google, you will see there are 533,000 results. You'll also see ads at the top of the page and ads on the right of the page. What does that mean? That means this is a competitive search term. But then you will see that my client, Independent You, is number one, and the page we were just looking at is the number one result organically, and the number two result is their home page. Okay, now let's go back to do people really type in transportation for seniors in Northern Virginia? Well, I took a little peek under the covers today uh, of uh, this client's um, what are called Google Analytics, and Google Analytics are uh, a tool that I use to. Um, be able to see a variety of things, including, excuse me, including what exact search terms people use. What, I'm, what you're looking at here are the top 10 search results out of hundreds and hundreds of search results. Uh, let me explain what a search result is. What this means is these are terms that people have used, typed into Google and searched and found independent you as a result. 
Okay, these are, this is something you really want to keep close track of. Google can show you the exact search terms people have used. If you've had Google Analytics installed for a while, you don't have to guess what people search, what terms they use. You'll find out, and you can then optimize and create advertising that relates and, and folds hand in glove with these terms. So these are actual terms that people have used. And having used those terms, they've come to independentu.net. Out of the hundreds and hundreds that they've, that individual terms that people's, people have used, I sorted these by the search terms that caused people to stay on the site the longest. It's a lot of different ways you can you know, slice this. But this is people stayed on the site the longest. And out of the top 10, nine out of the 10 include a geographic specifier. Number four, the one that I've grayed out, is actually the name of the business owner. So I just did that for her privacy. Um, but out of the top 10, we've got Northern Virginia, Virginia, Fairfax, Virginia, Northern Virginia, Northern Virginia, Virginia, Annandale, Virginia, Northern Virginia, Burke, Virginia. Okay. And I, if, if we had the time and I could show you all of their search terms, you would see about 90% of the time for this client, when people are searching, they're looking for a local solution to their problem. And what this does for this woman is it makes her phone ring. It gets her new clients on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Now, I want to take a little bit of a, a, a left turn here to go back to the... Um, ad that I uh, have listing for a plants repair Old Town Alexandria. And I just want to show you some of the techniques. This site has no backlinks. It has no citations. It's got nothing. But what it all, all it has is all this on-site, on-page optimization. So the first thing is the title tag. I also want to point out when you're looking at a search result, these are the things that Google shows you. They show you the title tag. This is why they put so much emphasis on it when they're looking at a page, because that is what they're going to show their customers. They show the title tag, then they show what uh, page that title, that blue link will go through to. Then they show you below that in the black text what is called the description tag. This is something I created. So as we start from the top, the title tag says, Appliance Repair in Old Town Alexandria. If you recall, that was the search term that we were optimizing for. You also notice I have the phone number in the title tag, and it's appearing in the search results. It, you could tap to call it from a mobile device. Then we look at the URL. It's what's called an exact match URL. The exact match is appliancerepair.inoldtownalexandria.com. Just like over-optimization, many people would tell you that an exact match URL is a no-no with uh, Google. As you can see, that is not the case uh, here. The real thing is, when somebody goes there, is there information about appliance repair in Old Town Alexandria there? And is there a phone number and this type of thing? If so, uh, they will give it a pass. And then, again, in the description tag, appliance repair in Old Town Alexandria, appliance repair service in Old Town Alexandria, etc. So here, let me explain re recency, frequency, and relevancy. Recency means two things. First off, how soon in the search phrase does the, uh, or in the link or whatever Google is looking at, does the search phrase appear? In other words, in the link at the top there, the blue link, the first two words are appliance repair. That means recent, soon, early in the phrase, appliance repair. Recency also means how recent or old is this uh, listing? And in some cases, the older the listing, the better. In some cases, the more recent the listing, and primarily with news items and uh, blog posts. Frequency means how many times does the word appliance repair appear in this listing? So if we start with the link, it shows up once, it shows up again in the URL, and it shows up twice in the description tag, then it shows up quite a number of times on the page, and it's also bolded. It's a number of times and emphasized on the page. Relevancy means how relevant is this page and the information presented on this page to the search that this searcher is making. So when we're searching, how do we search? The first thing is, again, when we're relating this to local providers of products and services, I need something right now. Something general, as you'll see, 
Something, uh, I'll show you, something general, something specific, something close by. I'll just repeat that. For example, I need some shoes. More specifically, I need running shoes in Alexandria, Virginia. Or I could get even more specific and use what is called a long tail search term. Now, I'll explain where that phrase comes from in a moment. But to give you an example of a long tail search term, appliance repair in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia is a long tail search term. And there are people who would say that, well, it's easy to search for appliance repair in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. There's not, a mu not much competition, and nobody searches for that anyway. Well, as I've already shown you with the results from um, Independent U, and I could show you a lot of results with a lot of other clients that I have, people absolutely do search by local terms, and they've come to learn, we're all coming to learn, that the more specific we get with our search term, the more likely we are to get a result. So I'll explain to you that what this graph is showing you. At the upper left is a one-word uh, search phrase, shoes. If you tried to get on the front page of Google for the word shoes, you'd have to spend a lot of money. Plus, I'd be willing to bet you're really not going to sell that many shoes uh, because people who are actually looking for shoes are looking for a specific type of shoe, and they're looking for it right now. So at the single word phrase, you get the highest number of potential searches, and it's the highest cost and the highest amount of competition to rank for a short phrase like that. As you come down to a two or three word phrase like men's shoes or come all the way further down to a more descriptive thing like red Nike men's running shoes to which I would add Alexandria, Virginia, what you'll find is, yes, there are much fewer people searching for that. The point is the people who search for that are looking for that right now in Alexandria, Virginia. And this is why it's so critical that you focus on long tail. And the long tail is the green part as you see going down uh, to the right, like the tail on, a, on an animal. OK. So with that in mind, how might we search for a local product or service? We might say, you know, I need a new door at my house. More specifically, I need a sliding glass door at my house in Lorton, Virginia. Or we might say, I'm looking for personal fitness training, but I don't want to go to the studio. I want them to come to me. And I live in Arlington, Virginia. Or we might say, I'm looking for affordable shared office space in Old Town, Alexandria. And as you guys might guess, I'm going to show you examples of all of these, uh, both as static slides and also as part of the live search demonstration. OK, now you might say, I didn't, I didn't add Alexandria, Virginia, but for some reason, I'm seeing Alexandria, Virginia results. I got a map. And it's almost like I'm right in the center of the map, and it's showing me all the thumbtacks all around me. How does that happen? Well, 99 times out of 100, Google knows where you are based on your IP address, which is the internet protocol address of your computer or the nearest router to you and that type of thing. So they know where you are, even if you don't put Lorton, Virginia 22079. On the other hand, you may well be using Lorton because you know that a more specific search phrase will give you more usable results. You can also use uh, zip code. They, uh, Google knows how to translate that as well. So I'm going to switch out now away from my uh, presentation, and I'm going to go to a live search demonstration. And <laughs> this is always the, uh, the exciting part because you think you know what the results are going to be when you're doing a live search, but you're not always correct. So let's see what, how I do with this, kids. Give me a moment as I switch over. And I'm going to uh, do a quick check here, see whether anybody has any questions. If, you, uh, if you'd like, you can uh, click over here on this tab that says chat. And then uh, click in here and type your question. And we'll check back with you in a little while to see if we've got any questions going on. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some searches. Now, these are search phrases of clients of mine that I, for whom I've search engine optimized their website. So we're going to go new front door, Clifton, Virginia. Whoop, not Clifton. And it's important that you add the state because uh, there is multiple Cliftons in the world. So here we see uh, 316,000 results. Okay. 
And I'm going to, excuse me one second, I'm going to do a little housekeeping here, go back to just sharing this particular page. Here it is. Thank you. Okay. And um, here is my client out of 316,000 results. Again, we have um, lots of ads here. In fact, I'm going to throw a little wrinkle on this one. I'm going to do this in the background here. I'm going to show you what it would cost you uh, to, let me see here, what it would cost you to pay for these ads on the right. Give me just a second to let this load up. So while it's loading up, we'll go back to this. You see ads all over the page, and uh, which tells you that this is a very competitive search term. If we continued on and went page after page, we can continue to see lots of ads. This is page two. This tells you that this is an extremely competitive search term. In a moment, we'll find out exactly how much it costs to buy an ad on here. But instead of buying an ad, my client, Fred's Best, Windows, Doors, and Siding, is number one in the organic search results. Let me just, they may not show a listing on Google AdWords for this, but if not, we'll just go with New Front Door because that's what these uh, other people are uh, paying for with those, the ads. Now let's just go new front door. Sorry for the uh, delay here. Okay, now you can see here new front door, $2.40 a click. That's actually relatively inexpensive, but I will tell you this. If you were spending $1,000 a month, you would only be getting uh, the ability to have about 14 or 15 clicks a day on your uh, on your ads and after your budget ran out your ad would no longer appear on uh, Google front page or otherwise this guy's listing shows up day after day after day Let's look at another uh, search term for him now if this works the way it did yeah now this is kind of amazing we see 305,000 results, and believe it or not, every single result on this page is all fredsbest.com, every single one. And they're all pointing to different pages on his site that have been optimized in different ways. It, even, even if you go to the second page, I believe he has the first two listings on the second page. Yes, casement windows and bay windows are all, uh, those are all point back to him. Let's switch uh, gears here and uh, go with high-end personal training. Now, what we have here is 121 million results. Okay. Now, let's see what this would cost. Uh, if you were to pay for one of these ads, and you can see there are ads all over the place. I bet we could go 10 pages deep and there would be ads here. One thing I want to point out also is this is the approximate cost per click. That doesn't necessarily mean for $2.40 a click you're going to get on the front page of Google. I'm a believer in Google advertising, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that, you know, when you can get it uh, optimized for free, why not? Okay, so here we have 341 for high end, 457 for personal training, 868 uh, for online personal training. You can see that these can be very expensive. Well, instead, my client, Synergy Fitness, is number one. Okay, and then number three is an article that I wrote on my blog about them. So you can see that, uh, you know, you can get some pretty amazing results. All right, let's go on to a uh, 
let's go on to a different uh, item. Let me see if I can turn this off. Oh. Okay. Uh, let me try another one here, and this I think will be interesting to you. Uh, High-end fitness club is something they really wanted to rank for, and again, they're number one. Okay, very uh, 155 million search terms. Let's and this I haven't even put in Arlington, Virginia, on them, but by uh, optimizing them for high-end fitness club Arlington, Virginia they get it uh, on a worldwide basis as well. And now you see they're number one, they're number two, and they're number three, a video. Let me show you a couple of searches relative to um, uh, independent you, and then I'll check and see if there's any, uh, anybody with any suggested searches. Okay, so here we have 1.79 million results, and this is a relatively generic term. It doesn't say anything about transportation services or uh, companionship services or anything else, but number three out of 1.8 million is good old uh, independent you, and she's number four as well. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff that really makes her phone ring, and it's the kind of stuff that you can do yourself. Uh, right away. Okay, so I promised you that I uh, would also give you a number of things that you can do right away to try to get yourself up on the uh, front page of Google. Here's, here's the first thing you should do. Create five search phrases rel uh, related to your business, like Old Town Alexandria Residential Real Estate, or uh, Prince William County remodeling or Arlington Virginia florist or whatever it is that you do combine the general term remember the shoes example shoes men's shoes men's shoes Alexandria Virginia do that for yourself create five search phrases that relate to your business that can include the general term a more specific or customized term and the geographic uh, qualifier now, once you've created those five phrases, run searches on those phrases on Google and see whether you find yourself there. And if you don't, make a list of the people you do find there and, and analyze their listing the way that I showed you earlier. Look at the link. The blue link is the title tag. What does the title tag say? Is it in direct alignment with the search phrase? It probably is. Then look below that at the green section that shows you the exact page address that this blue link will take you to. Look at the URL. Does the URL also include the words and phrase that you uh, put in there? I'll be willing to bet that it does. Then look at the black text, the description part. Does the description tag include the search phrases uh, that, you're, uh, that you're wanting to rank for? Now, you'll see that your competitors' websites and your competitors' listings and all of the other things that show up on the front page of Google are optimized for these search phrases that you need to be optimized for. So now, go look at your website if you have one. And look at your title tags. Does, does, your, uh, does your home page say home or untitled or index in the title tag? It probably does. A lot of times it does. Um, do you even have a title tag? Do you have a description tag? Do you, you know, are, do you have any footer text on the page? If not, you need to check with your uh, webmaster and find out how you can get these things put in because these are the things that have gotten uh, my fitness club client to the top of the rankings on, uh, ahead of tens of millions of other results for fairly generic terms like high-end fitness club, high-end personal training, and so forth. Now. You can do that, or maybe you can't figure out how to do that, or you, uh, you don't talk to your web person anymore. If there's nothing that you are personally able to do uh, with your website, then either in addition or instead of that, you definitely need to go out and claim your op and optimize your Google Plus local listing. It's an absolute necessity. And um, basically what you do is 
type in the name of your company along with your address into the search engine, hit enter, and you should find your Google listing. Then you, you click on the link for it, and it, up in the upper right corner will be a thing that says, is this your business? Claim your listing. You click on that, and you'll have to do a little dance with Google so that they feel comfortable that you're really who you say you are. But once you are uh, confirmed, then you need to put in a description of your business, all the different types of categories of business that you do, photographs of your business, videos of your business, and so forth. And then finally, if you really want to get on the front page of Google as quickly as possible, the number one thing you can do is create a search engine optimized classified ad on either uh, Craigslist or Backpage, where the title of your ad, which will become the title tag in the listing, includes your search phrase. You know, best florist, Arlington, Virginia, phone number. And then you make sure that the ad itself also includes that information. And you will see that sometimes within hours, that listing will pop up on the front page of Google. So that's everything that I had for you guys today. I, uh, I absolutely uh, appreciate your time, and I'm going to take another check here to see uh, whether or not I have any questions or any, uh, any suggested uh, searches that will do. And if not, I will uh, move on. In fact, you know what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll ask uh, Jeff Payne, who's here with me, helping me run the presentation, uh, whether or not he has any questions, anything that you would want to I mean, it's okay if you don't. It's not a problem. I just thought I'd ask you. Didn't want to shut it down without you having an opportunity to at least. Okay. No questions at this time, Your Honor. And uh, we will uh, go back to this. Again, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, spend with me today. And um, we'll, uh, we'll come back again on another topic very soon. Um, until then, I'm Frank Felker thanking you for your time and looking forward to seeing your company listed online.